so um, we're going to start off this month with um, taking a movie instead of a scripture and really kind of diving into it and seeing how we can connect with it and use it within our lives. And so Bishop and Pastor Sherry, well, Pastor Sherry's here. Bishop's not here, but he says hello. And um, I'm just grateful to come before you today. I'm thankful for any time there's an opportunity to say yes to bring you the word of God. So as you can likely guess, our movie for the week is cast away. And um, for those of you who never saw the movie, the movie is about Chuck, which um, is played by Tom Hanks, who's a successful businessman. He has a great life. He just proposed to his girlfriend and he goes on a trip and his plane crashes. He is the only survivor and he ends up washed up on shore on an uninhabited island. And so the movie is about Chuck living his life day by day, trying to get off of this island. So it, fo it focuses on survival. It focuses on him developing muscles that he never knew he had and pushing through various obstacles. And you could say, well, you know, where is the connection? You know, you may not have found yourself cast away on a deserted island, but, you know, these feelings of loss, and loneliness are feelings that are very, very common to us in our lives at different seasons. And so the, there are many, many examples of losses um, that may resonate with you. One of them being maybe the death of a loved one. It could have been maybe a close family member or friend or somebody you knew for a long time or maybe somebody you were just getting to know like the loss of a baby. Or maybe you've lost a relationship, um, somebody you thought was was going to be your husband or your wife in this world and that wasn't the case or maybe you actually did marry the love of your life and decades later it ends up in divorce there could be loss in business maybe a business partner blindsided you or maybe your kid turned their back on you and they don't want anything to do with you maybe a friend lied and that wound is so deep that you can't even look them in the face anymore or how about maybe your childhood was taken from you without any fault of your own. So many losses. I have a few more. What about your health? Maybe you have a diagnosis hanging over your head that you didn't see coming, and you're not really sure what your future looks like anymore. Mortality is staring you in the face like it did Chuck. Or maybe you're just aging, you're getting older, and you're not processing that well. You're looking to the right and to the left and people are passing away and you're thinking about your youth and you're thinking about your regrets. Is your loss financial? Maybe like me, you do one too many scratch offs or you just lost money in the stock market or you made a bad investment with the home or maybe you're just working day by day by day by day, pining away and not building anything. You're not seeing the fruits of your labor. And so many shapes, many forms can, call, can come the losses in our lives. One more, how about opportunities, dreams, aspirations, right? You missed out on a great position at work years ago. You're still hung up on it. Maybe you have an unfulfilled dream that like you don't even pray about anymore, or you're not where you thought you would be. You're not doing what you thought you would do. And so our trauma, it leaves us discouraged, it leaves us grieving, it leaves us lonely. And um, it's not something that we could wish away or pretend away, no matter how positive our thinking is and our feelings can leave us emotionally drained. And so we're just living from day to day, passing the time until we can get to our next season of happiness. And so here we meet our character, Chuck in the movie, and we're able to witness Chuck really pushing through the hurt and the loss and the pain and the loneliness and everything like that. If you remember the movie, it kind of keeps you on edge, right? Like you see him fishing, you see him hurting himself while trying to fish, you see him trying to cut a coconut, but instead stabbing himself in the hand, you see him trying to make it over the waves and then like the waves slamming him down and, and injuring him really badly. And we root for him, he makes fire, and we root for him and he makes SOS signs, and we root for him and he's hoping we're hoping somebody's gonna come midway through the movie and nobody ever comes for him and so we even witnessed him attempting to commit suicide and he even fails at that and so we see his dreams slowly diminishing and we see him slowly lose hope all throughout the movie as he resigns himself 
to living on the island. He has no one to talk to. He forms a friend out of a soccer ball that he calls Wilson and takes Wilson everywhere with him. So we're following Chuck and we're following Wilson throughout these four years of their wilderness. And before I pray, I just want to say it begs me to ask the question, how long has your wilderness lasted? Or is your wilderness still going on? How long have you been lonely? How long have you been suffering with your losses, with your trauma? How long have you been waiting on God to answer the deepest cry of your heart? So I know this sounds a little depressing, but we're going to encourage you today because the Lord sees where you are and he knows where you are and he wants you to not give up on yourself because he has not given up on you. And so we have a word for you today. So let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. I know I said a lot before we prayed, but let's pray. Father in heaven, you know all things. Nothing is too small or inconsequential for you to grab a hold of and use in our lives, God. Thank you for your presence here today. Your presence that never leaves us. It walks out the door with us. It stands with us day by day. Speak to us today, Lord. Give us a word in season to encourage our hearts, to strengthen us, and to bring us closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So when we're going through, I know that we try to be good Christians, you know, we try to read the word and we try to pray, we try to live our best positive life and we seek encouragement from different sources and um, we'll go to church and, you know, we'll, we're hoping that the message really speaks to us today and, uh, um, and a lot of times that it does and we seek outside sources and, and sometimes we're good, sometimes we're at peace and sometimes we're like, yeah, man, I can't really do this, this is good and then another day comes and then we find ourselves back in that discouraged feeling. And so the movie teaches us, because it's tough, you know, it's tough when you're going through. And the movie teaches us that there are things that you can do to ease the burden of your journey. So if you're taking notes, I do have three points that, um, that can help you along in your process, whether it's for you in this moment, whether it speaks to you from before, whether you're thinking of somebody else that it might help, or maybe, maybe it's something that might come in the future, whatever the case may be, where um, we're going to equip you today. And the first point is... Keep hope alive. Psalms 25.5 says, All day long I put my hope in you, for you are the one who saves me. David is saying, I'm putting my hope in you all day long. I'm seeking hope from you all the time. You know, Chuck in the movie always had his fire burning. He had the SOS sign. He had um, his, his help signs. He was always looking out towards the horizon. When something randomly washed up on shore, he used it to his advantage in that moment, but he was always seeing if he could use it to get off of the island. As a matter of fact, towards the end of the movie, it was a metal crate that he found that he used as a sail to get off. And so Chuck found use for everything, as if his happy moment was coming at any time. So for the most part, he wasn't giving up. He was trudging through every single day. Every day brought loneliness, every day brought pain, and every day brought a physical picture, literally a physical one, because he had a picture of his fiance of what he was missing out on. And yet, somehow, every day brought sustenance. If you never watched the movie, I want to point you to a similar lonely man in the Bible. One of my favorite characters in the Bible is the prophet Elijah. And in the book of 1 Kings, when God called a severe famine in the land, Elijah was really taken care of. God provided a brook for him with water that didn't run out for a long time. And God commanded ravens to feed him. And God commanded a widow to provide food for him that just never ran out. God was miraculously providing for Elijah during the drought. And when he finally got a word from God that rain was coming, he sent his servant out to look for the cloud that signified rain. And the reason he did that is because, like us, we always want some sort of physical evidence, right, that God's promise is coming to pass in his life. And every time the servant went out, the servant would come back in and say, I see no cloud. And Elijah was constantly sending him out. Why? Because Elijah knew that God was a promise keeper. The Bible says that no word of God 
ever fails. We're the ones who can fail. We're the ones who can give up. But God is faithful. God is good. His word says that the righteous will never be forsaken. That means that you are never forgotten and the Holy Spirit is always with you. So just like Elijah and just like Chuck, you have to keep looking for your cloud. Even if you don't see a cloud, keep going back. Look for your cloud. Go to the feet of Jesus. Look for your cloud. Go to prayer. Look for your cloud. Go to the Bible. Look for your cloud because it's there. Encourage yourself and keep that picture and that vision right in front of you because God has it for you. You have to, you know, like close your eyes and picture in your mind's eye. You have to picture your healing. You have to picture your wedding. You have to picture, you know, your baby. You have to picture the graduation day. Picture the family reunion. You have to picture your victory, okay? You are never alone in those visions. God will speak speak to you through your visions, through the pictures in your mind of what you're waiting on. That's why his word says to write the vision down. So if God, the Bible also says that God also clothes the lilies of the field. If he loves them so much that lilies can be so beautiful, how much more would he care for you? Now, when Elijah's servants came back to report that he finally had a cloud, he described it as being very small, as if it didn't mean much. You got to take every little cloud that you can get and work it to your advantage. You know, if you lost a loved one and one day you, want, you see a picture of them and instead of crying, you smile, guess what? That's a cloud. Something is shifting in your heart. Or maybe you lost a home and a friend has a new home and you want to celebrate with them and you actually feel the joy of celebrating with them instead of the depression of what happened to you, guess what? That is a cloud as well. So Chuck had, and Chuck had a physical picture of his fiance on a watch, right? That he would look at every day to be his motivation. And this is what kept him going. There are 24 hours in a day and not much to do on an island. I'm pretty sure that he maybe was encouraged for one hour and the other 23 hours, he really had to contend with his own self. You know, it's really really hard sometimes to stay encouraged, especially when you're taking hit after hit after hit. Even my favorite prophet Elijah, even he did all these wonderful things in the Bible for God. And even after all of that rain came and God's word came to pass, he still got discouraged and he still got suicidal after all of that. Every day is different. And so every day we have to choose faith. And every day we have to choose peace. And every day we have to choose joy, right? Right? We have to keep choosing to keep our eyes on Jesus. It just takes a moment to shift your focus. It's like Peter walking on the water. He's looking at Jesus. He's walking on the water. And the minute he looks over here, he starts to sink. It's the same thing. Thing. Yesterday's encouragement may not work. Yesterday's faith will not carry you through today. And it might because maybe you had a recent victory and it really is carrying you and it really is great. But the truth is that every single day comes to test us, to weigh us in the balances, to see if we are going to lean into God and pursue him daily. So whatever that looks like for you and finding your hope, maybe it's listening to encouraging music or listening to encouraging messages, or daily podcasts, or deciding only to speak to friends that are encouraging, or or positive, and do away with all the negative ones, or just keeping a tally of all the things you're thankful for throughout the day. You can get creative here, right? You got to keep your hope. And guess what? The enemy is going to come swiftly into your mind when your hope is low. He whispers, this is his favorite time to visit you. His favorite time to visit you is not when you're sleeping. His favorite time to visit you is not when you're sinning. His favorite time to visit you is when your hope is low. He whispers that you're done and he screams that, you know, that you'll never get anything back. And he causes you to think that you're finished and this is the last straw that broke the camel's back. This is what the devil does to you. Those negative thoughts are not from God. You have to choose to reject those thoughts and not let them find rest in your mind. Listen, God doesn't use a crushing season in your life to crush you more. God is not going to be having you look at the past. He is future-minded. He is forward-thinking. He wants you to see what is left for you. You see, destiny is never fulfilled until you're actually gone from this earth. There is an assignment for you every single day that you're here. And the last thing to go is our hope. You just 
have to keep it burning. Even if you just have a little bit, fan the flame. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, hope does not disappoint us. And even if you say to yourself, well, Nikki, I have no hope. My hope is gone. There's nothing there. If you're saying that to yourself today, I want to let you know that this is the very moment right now in the name of Jesus that God is instilling hope into you, that God is putting that spark within you. So consider this the moment that your hope sparks back into you and grab hold of it and keep your hope alive. Amen? Wow, 20 minutes. Okay, so the second point is being lonely doesn't mean that you're alone. My favorite. Psalms 27.10 says, even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. What that means is even those who are supposed to be the closest to me leave me intentionally or unintentionally. God is with you. And the reason that I mention loneliness is because many times when we're going through something, we naturally feel alone. Even if we're going through it with somebody, like we're going through it together, we're still going to feel the sting of loneliness on our own. And like I mentioned before, Chuck made friends with Wilson, his soccer ball, to help to lessen that feeling of being lonely. Hello to all of my people who talk to themselves. I talk to myself in the shower, so, you know, you can be with me on this one. In Genesis 2, verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who's just right for him. Now you can counter and say, well, Nikki, I am alone and my heart is broken. Well, I'll point you to another scripture. Psalms 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he rescues those whose spirits are crushed. Jesus is always present, always. He is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. You don't need to get an imaginary friend um, like Chuck did. You don't need to take your talking to yourself to the next level. Like first it was in the shower, now you're in the car and you're talking to yourself. All of a sudden you're in the grocery store and you're mumbling to yourself and people are looking at you crazy. You don't need to go that far. What I'm saying is don't underestimate um, God's presence in your time of loneliness. It's really difficult to f when you feel like you don't have somebody in your corner or somebody to bear your soul. This is what spouses are for and best friends and close relationships. And honestly, even in that, you can still feel the sting of loneliness. You can still feel like you're always alone. So what are you supposed to do then? If you get nothing from this message, I want you to get this. You are not alone. You see, we are not created to live apart from God's constant presence. You're, you are not meant to live feeling this void. The book of John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word equals Jesus, Jesus equals God, and they're together in the beginning. They're one. Similarly, when the creator created you, he made you to be one with him. That's why the Bible says that we are the branches, the branches on the vine, the vine being Jesus and God being the vine dresser, right? God created you to be an extension of himself, still your own person, but a part of him. So anytime we're feeding off of anything more than we're feeding off of God, a void will occur, whether you're by yourself or not. And then it becomes more difficult to stay rooted in the fact that we're not alone when trials do come. You see what I'm saying? Now, Jesus had 12 disciples. And yet the New Testament tells us that he frequently drew away to lonely places to pray. And I know it was because he needed to pray, but I bet that Jesus had a loneliness that none of the disciples could fill, you know? And whenever he found himself in a quiet place, he prayed. So I just want to give you a few sub points here in your lonely place. Number one, I would ask that you submit all of your lonely moments to the Lord. Begin to converse with him in prayer. Begin to, you know, read the word about whatever it is that you're feeling. Don't, don't allow all the voids. Don't, don't feed all the extra voids, you know, with Netflix and hangouts and, 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 and alcohol and stuff like that. Don't do that. All right. The second thing is if you're grieving, experience your grief. Grief isn't meant to be silenced and it's not meant to be handled alone. Take it to the Lord to prayer. Cry out to God and also seek 
outside help. The third thing, don't isolate yourself. This is a common one. The enemy loves when you feel you got, like you have nothing, like you have no one, and you're in a cave unto yourself. And you can say to yourself, I don't need people. People are whack. But, you know, God made us for each other. He's within us. And he uses us to reach out to each other in the time of need. So I want you to accept God's hand of friendship wherever it may come. Listen, God comes to us in various forms, okay? He can encourage us and speak to us in any way. Don't discount or neglect how God can speak to you no matter who it is. Sometimes I'll have a patient at work and I'm just examining them and they're chatting away and they say exactly the thing that I need to hear. Whatever sentence they said speaks profoundly to my spirit. They don't know anything about me, about my life, but it touches me and I feel like, wow, God is here. Like now, like in this moment, he's even using my patient to speak to me. In Luke chapter 28, um, um, after Jesus' resurrection, we see two disciples on the road to what's called Emmaus. And the two disciples are down and, and browbeaten because, you know, Jesus just died and he's gone. And so um, the Bible says that Jesus visits them and, and that God didn't allow them to recognize him and he walks with them and he talks to them and encourages them and then he disappears and suddenly the disciples eyes are open and they realize that it was Jesus with them and they said to each other didn't our hearts burn within us when he was talking like that's what it's like sometimes when someone says to you something to you that you know it's from the Lord so those are some things that you can do another important thing is you know find someone that you can trust don't have anyone, you can get a neutral perspective, you can find a therapist, you can find a counselor. You don't have to go through life alone. Pray that the Lord brings somebody into your life, but even if you don't have someone, you're still not alone. The Lord is with you. God has many names in the Bible. Two of my favorite are Jehovah Shammah, which means he is there in that moment, and the other another one is El Roi, which means the God who sees. Like he just sees you. He sees where you are he sees what you're saying he sees what you're not saying he just sees you like he's right in your heart you know so just always remember that you are not alone all right so I'm gonna go to point three and that is make the best of the situation while you wait for change Colossians 1 chapter 10 chapter 1 verse 10 tells us to always be producing good fruit like at all the time if we go back to chuck in the in the movie chuck was a white collar fedex employee he wasn't like this big you know brutish man but yet he learned survival skills while he was on the island he spare fished um he built fire every day um he he set up his nice cave he had a shelter outside for when he was outdoors and like i said anything that washed up on shore he used it to his advantage he even made a calendar in the cave and use the sunlight to mark off the days turning into months turning into years that must have been so depressing it's so hard when you see like all the years just kind of going by like it's time to just keep moving and you're still dealing with your sickness or you're still dealing with your grief or you're still dealing with your loss and your regrets or your loneliness right or your unfulfilled dream but like Chuck we can make very good use of our time one of the things you can do is take the focus off of you and reach out to others in need there is never a shortage of people in need out of all of us that are in here we are all in in an area of need. Even if it's a support group that you're joining for yourself, you could still end up being a blessing to that person in need. Another one is finding new hobbies. You can find new strength. You can find new creativity and new things that you didn't think that you would like. You can further your career. You can set a new wellness plan. Be good to yourself. Be good to your body. Be good to your health. You can set new goals. You don't like your family traditions? Start new traditions. Make new friends life will go on life will still happen the clock never stops ticking right so you have to stay courageous and keep living your life the bible says to be of good courage and wait on the lord i am constantly reminding myself of this scripture because our wait is always 
on the Lord. You are not waiting for the, bank, for the bank to approve you. You are waiting on God. You're not waiting for somebody to come and fill a void in your life that the last person left. You are waiting on God. You are always, always waiting on God. Not the healing, but God to bring the healing. So, you know, be about your business while you're waiting. Work on your wounded heart. Work on your grief. He will help you with your plans. Work on your next business idea. Be like Chuck and learn some survival skills. Don't allow your heart to be so hard or so wounded that you're not moving forward. You have to be able to see grievance as an opportunity to draw closer to God. I, I felt this really strongly when doing this message, that God's saying, you are still able to flourish where you are. God's word says that he makes rivers and creates pathways through the dry wilderness so that his chosen people can be refreshed. Your time is not over. God wants to refresh your heart, your body, your soul, no matter how tired you may even feel. You are still bearing fruit. Whether it looks like it or not, you're still bearing fruit. There are still seeds planted on the inside side of you that are budding there are still shoots growing up in what you think is dry soil of your life there are things growing within you let me tell you God is the master gardener he knows how to use your circumstances and all the things going on in your life to fertilize his destiny in your life so keep building keep crying keep praying keep fasting keep living keep surviving keep doing whatever you have to do if you keep falling keep falling keep getting back up up. Make the most out of every season. Amen? Amen. Um, amen. So, my time is almost done. But <laughs> as I close, I just, I just want to say, you know, Chuck, he didn't even have a Christian perspective and he was still able to push through adversity, right? So how much more us, right, that have the Holy Spirit of God to infuse new grace and new strength into us every day and new wisdom and give us all the things that we need. You have a lot to your advantage, saints. I don't know what kind of loss or grief you're holding on to. You know, loneliness really can be oppressive. I've been there and, re and regrets can really push you over the edge. I I've been there too and disappointments really can cause a depression that is pull, hard to pull yourself out of I have also been there but Isaiah 43 says and I'm gonna speak this over you and I'm paraphrasing but it says listen to the Lord who created you the one who formed you he says do not be afraid for I have ransomed you and I have called you by name you are mine. So when you go through deep waters, I'll be with you. And when you go through rivers of difficulty, it will not consume you, right? And when you go through fires, they won't burn you up because I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel and your Savior. I traded others' lives for yours, for yours. Like there were other people that could have had this. I got rid of them and I traded them for you because you are my chosen people amen and he says you're precious to me he says you're honored he says I love you like these are his words over us receive that today in the name of Jesus so perhaps it's time hallelujah to view our suffering our disappointments in a whole new way because now that you realize number one first of all I'm not in control of anything I thought I was and I'm not and now God wants to transform us through our losses. He wants to take that void. He wants us to yield it to him so that he can now make something beautiful out of it. He wants us. This is what God wants. He wants us to get to the point of spiritual maturity that we can say like David in Psalms 119, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Can we get there? It was good for me. I saw God's hand in it. God worked it out. It didn't kill me. It didn't destroy me. I got better. I used it. I finished my course. Amen. Listen, everything is created by him and used for his purpose. God gives us the tools. 
He gives us the people that we need to go through challenges. And I also want you to keep just kind of an eternal perspective too, because remember that there's no sorrow in heaven, right? I'm just talking about right here. But in this life, we can learn today to grieve well, to find contentment in life's losses and disappointments, to look back and see ourselves stronger from our situation that we thought that we would die from. God's betting on you. There's light at the end of your tunnel. You will get there. Amen? Amen. Amen. Such a good sermon we just heard there. Um, Listen, if this sermon did anything for you, if it, if it impacted you in any way, that's good. That's what we're here for, man. That's why we do these sermons. That's why we preach every Sunday so that uh, the word of God can impact our lives. I mean, that is our mission statement, that all generations will be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we love hearing these testimonies of how what we do here in this church and how the word is impacting your lives. So if you do have something that you'd like to share with us, you can always do so either in the chat. It may encourage somebody. Uh, you can email at stories at genchurchny.com. We love reading those stories about what God is doing in your life. Or, or the other option that you have is to uh, hit us up on Instagram. That's right. Another place that you can share that is by going on our social media page and letting us know what God is doing in your life through these sermons. So don't be, don't be, you know, don't be shy, you know, don't hoard it. Maybe other people need to hear about what God is doing in your life. Am I right? Y'all with me on that? You guys, come on, I, I believe you. I can't hear you, but I, I feel it. I feel the connection that we have here. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. I know that uh, the sermon just was done and church is almost over. Just give me one more minute. I wanna let, I wanna let anybody know who, who doesn't know Jesus, I wanna give you an opportunity to say yes to him today. Um, it's, it's, it's what we exist to do as a church, to bring people into the family of God. So if that's you today and you felt something in your heart, you're like, man, I really wanna get right with God. I wanna make a commitment to following Jesus today. You can do so quite simply by praying this very, very simple prayer for us just, Focus on God right now and just say these words. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I want to repent today and put my faith in you. Be my Lord, be my God, and teach me how to live for you. And that's it. That's it. That simple prayer of faith and surrender can change your whole life. And if you prayed that prayer today, which I believe some of you did, I want you to do something real bold. Type in the chat, I have decided, all caps, all right? All caps, I have decided. And so one of our hosts will reach out to you and pray with you. And look, one more thing you can do. If that, if you don't feel like, you know, you don't want to put it in the chat, type. I mean, you can just hit the uh, ask for prayer button. There's a request prayer button right there that also will notify our hosts and they will reach out to you that way as well. I hope that was clear. I hope that, you know, was good enough instruction, but uh, I'm just excited about what God is doing here through this church and through you guys, our online church as well. Uh, come back next week. We're going to have another week, another powerful word and time in the house of God. Can't wait to see you guys. Y'all be